This video will explain how to assess the quality and performance of slow-release sachets. Predatory mites are excellent biocontrol agents of several pests. They are formulated as loose material for broadcasting over the crop, or as slow-release sachets, also called breeding sachets. In contrast to weekly broadcasts that can easily be adjusted as needed, growers rely on the sachets to keep performing well for an extended period of time. Therefore, it is a good idea to monitor the performance of the sachets. However, there is conflicting information about how a grower can determine if the sachets are okay. If you rip open a few sachets at various time points, you should be able to find live predatory mites and prey mites. Here is what they look like in the bran. But keep in mind that their numbers are not good predictors of the performance of the sachet. What is more important than what is in the sachet is what is coming out of the sachet. These are the mites that will disperse among the crop plants in search of pests. The best measure of performance and quality, therefore, is to monitor the weekly walkout. Sachets are like little predator production factories. The initial population will reproduce for several generations, and excess predators will leave the sachet through a hole. Over the course of several weeks, hundreds of predators will come out of the sachet. If you put these numbers in a graph, it will look like this. Weekly walkout of predators increases to a maximum and decreases after that. There is a natural variability between sachets and weeks, and depending on the climate in the greenhouse, the walkout curve can have different shapes. Here is how to monitor weekly walkout. In order to get a reliable sample of the whole box, use a minimum of six sachets. Place the sachets in a small, heavy glass on the bottom of a plastic container. You can put multiple sachets together, but if you put too many, it may be difficult to count later. Fill the container with water so the glass with the sachets is surrounded by water. Add a small drop of soap to break the surface tension of the water so the mites will sink. Place the containers in the greenhouse in locations where sachets would normally be hung, so they are exposed to the same conditions, preferably in the shade. This will give a realistic measure of how the sachets are performing in the crop. Top up water as needed. Count the mites in the water at least once a week. For this, you can observe the mites directly in the water, but it is probably easier to filter the water and count them on the filter. Remove the sachets from the glass and rinse the mites from the glass into the container. Pour the water through a small coffee filter. Take care to swirl the water around to rinse all the mites into the filter. Count the mites under the microscope. If the filter with the mites is not too wet, you can put them in the freezer to count later. This also kills any mites that may still be alive. Make sure to label everything and to take notes. The predatory and food mites are easy to distinguish from each other under a microscope. Predatory mites are egg-shaped without spots, while food mites are more irregular in shape, have long hairs, and depending on the species, have spots. <laughs> 